Hello and good evening and welcome to our first very special Canon on the Couch uh, for this year. Thanks for tuning in. My name's Jackson. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here. Um, tonight we've got a very special um, it's a very special person that will come on the show who has had some great experience in the creative industry in Sydney. She's had some very good music uh, photography experience. She's been on film sets. She's worked with brands like Qantas, Pro Photo, George's and among others. Um, so please allow me to introduce the owner of very special Four Minutes to Midnight. We've got Maria Boydiagis. Maria? Thanks for joining us. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. <laughs> Thanks for coming on. I, I know we, uh, we spoke briefly last week, but uh, it's, again, a great pleasure to have you on, and we want to learn all about you tonight and how you started in the industry. First, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in photography. So I got started at uni. Uh, mm -hmm. I started doing design. And yep. I went from des doing design for a few years and one yep. of my lecturers said I'd be better as a photographer. So I um, looked yep. into transferring over to photography at UTS. Uh, and yep. we, so then you, I did transfer so you, over, yeah. Yeah, so you went the, the um, more classical route of studying in I photography, did. is that right? That's correct, yeah. Cool. Yeah, well, I actually awesome. wanted wanted to do album covers and mm -hmm. uh, while I was doing design that's what the path was and I found out that later I wanted to actually do the background cover which is the photo so that's how I decided that the, the photography was the route to go. The photo itself. Now what yeah. about music um, drew you towards uh, music and the pathway of music and why was the cover albums or cover photos so significant in your um, upbringing? So I was really lucky growing up. I, my family was very art-based mm -hmm. and uh, we, we used to go down to the Canberra Art Gallery every year to see the art yep. and I really loved it. And then I really enjoyed looking at art and seeing mm -hmm. the way shapes and tones <laughs> and shadows capture an image. So yep. I was really, um, it, it really inspired me to do yep. that later on. And I had a very great passion for music. As yeah, well. cool. Um, and music in your childhood, was it, was it coming from mum? Was it coming from dad? What were the musical influences <laughs> like growing up? It was both. Both. I, um, I actually remember, yeah, it was very fun. We used to have parties every year as well. And mum and dad used to really blast the music. And I even remember like coming home from school and Red Hot Chili Peppers was blasted while I walked in the door or nice. Santana and... I really like it really made me happy I guess you could say awesome awesome yeah. and and when you were studying at school so you were doing a bit of design in the later years at school was that how you went down the design pathway uh no I actually hated photography in high school mm. uh we did a Please lot don't. of still life and yep. we did there, there was a dark room we had accessibility to it mm. and we used to do a lot of um still life as in like apples and like with the film camera and I yep. just hated it so much. Yep. So I think I even transferred over to a different, like, elective, I think they call it. Yeah, right. Um, and I yeah, did yeah. textiles or something instead. And then I decided that's what I wanted to do when I finished. I wanted to do album covers, and that's why I went to design. But they yeah. were making their own fonts and that kind of thing, and I was like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> yes, a bit, bit more of the mundane-based design. But you yeah. wanted to com combine something visual more with the, the tech space as well, which is really cool. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. Cool. So you've, you've gone down the pathway of doing design at uni and then you decided after a little while of doing that, that um, photography was more of the a gravitational interest in, it, in the album covers. How did you find photography as a degree starting out? Was it something that naturally um, clicked or was it something that it took a little bit later to inspire you? I definitely knew that I really enjoyed it. I really mm. liked it. I definitely had a passion for photography. And it was yep. funny that when I transferred over from design to photography, I, I led into my path, which was live music, because mm. I, that same day I transferred over and got into photography, 
I emailed all these venues in Sydney saying, could I be your photographer for live music? Because I had a, such yep. a passion for it. And yep. I, I got a reply back from Oxford Art Factory, luckily, and that's when I started there. Yeah, wow. Awesome. And, and what, I, what prompted you to reach out? Because it's not a, a general thing that uh, I guess photographers looking for work, you know, they might wait for the opportunity to come up. What sort of transpired for you to, to reach out and sort of force your way through in the industry a little bit? I think uh, having a passion really does make a difference. I used mm -hmm. to look through film photography books when, like, as in, sorry, uh, medium format, 35 mil of yep. live music. And I used yep. to really get passionate about it and be like, that is just so cool. Like that is, you know, I just really love it. Like seeing guitars or people like musicians jumping. And I was like, that's awesome. I wonder if I could do that. And like every yeah. time I went to a gig, I was like, this is awesome. Like imagine having this as a career. I'm sure lots of people think that. Yes. And um, once I know I want something, I will definitely go out and get it. And I think that's from my parents saying like, being very good to me and saying you do mm. what your passion is and that was yep. it and I just went out and I tried to get a job the first day of mm. photography not knowing how to use a camera probably just gone um, straight into it tell, it tell us very, a bit yeah. of <laughs> tell us a bit about your like technical photography um influences because when we were talking a little bit earlier it's, you you basically were reaching out when you you didn't even have a camera at one point to start, That's start right. out. yeah <laughs> I um I didn't think the venues would well Oxford Art Factory I didn't think that they would reply back so fast mm -hmm. and what happened was <laughs> is that um it's yeah it's crazy I reached out, they replied back like the day after and I hadn't even started my degree yet of photography and not even the first day. Wow. And I didn't have a camera and I, they said to come in and have a test run for a night we, and there was mm. something really big on, I honestly don't remember what it was, but yeah. um, it was a big gig because Oxford Art Factory do host really international artists and big artists. Yes. So yeah. I was a bit nervous and... I had to borrow a camera because I couldn't afford to buy a camera at the time, like last minute. And uh, I had to buy this really small compact camera that was yep. not good in low light at all. <laughs> um, especially if people in Sydney know that a photographer's that Oxford Art Factory's light is not good, <laughs> especially when there's not any uh, lighting tech that is paid to like paid well by an artist to do it. And they yeah. just don't really care, you know? For sure, yeah. the small the smaller gigs as such. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and and based off your first experience, rather than be disheartened, um, you turned in some images. And how did that go down? Very well for me. I was kicking myself. Like I was so upset. I remember yep. that night. It was red light, very dark. One one red light with fog, and <laughs> it was a mosh pit. And the fact is that. Oxford Art Factory don't have a photo pit. So yep. uh, a photo pit is just a barrier that the ph photographers can go down easily yes. and yes. capture it for three songs or whatever the venue suggests and all the rules. And so this is a mosh pit full of maybe like 600 people. And I'm pretty sure it was a heavy band that was playing that night. And I was like, Jeez. couldn't use a camera. <laughs> and... <laughs> Well, I did have some kind of knowledge, but not low light knowledge. And I was very small at the time and I was like pushed around, having the camera on top of my head, trying to shoot. And at the time, this camera, they, they're very updated now. They have screens where you can see what you're shooting. This camera did not mm. have like that access of doing that or the option. Yes, yeah, so, so certainly. So doing you, it was you try, hard. You've got the <laughs> DSLR experience where if you shoot to live view, you're getting a very different experience to what you are in today's world. That's right. Yeah. And I remember um, this girl staying next to me that was a photographer and she's like, oh, you can just fix it in post. And then I came back <laughs> and I'm like, I can't fix this. <laughs> no uh, way. Yeah. It's, so it's I got back. Yeah, I'm sure it's very hard to fix images out of focus or way underexposed, especially back then, um, just through editing alone, I'm sure. I mean, it wasn't even that. It was that the red light was so hard that it took out mm. all detail of the face. 
or any there detail of like any kind of skin texture. Yeah. So wow. when I went back, I, they showed the photos and I was just like, I'm embarrassed really. Like oh, I yeah. did such a bad job and I kind of just begged a little and I was like, can you please let me shoot again and like have another chance? And the owner yes. did, he's uh, Mark Berber. And uh, he ended up being a mentor for me with some other Oxidart crew who okay. kept, I kept coming in weekly and saying, yep. they were saying this is like not good enough pretty much <laughs> until yeah. I did get good enough. And, you know, it took a while. It really did. So, so <laughs> but I'm very grateful honesty. for it. Yeah, a bit of brutal yes, honesty. Yes, it hurt. Harsh, harsh early. Yep. That would have, that would have hurt the ego a little bit starting out, that's for sure. But no. obviously that... Obviously, they could see you were passionate about it and obviously they could see you, you know, come back every week and, and, and keep going. Is that sort of the understanding that you, got, you had with the rest of the team there? Yeah, so I ended up shooting every gig. When I say every gig, I mean every gig. And I was doing full-time uni at the time, so I was coming from uni sometimes and shooting really late yes. nights to get up and do even yep. do, like, assignments and stuff and have this yep. but because I had such a passion for it I was okay and I was happy to do it I um I shot almost every day every night and it was hard and I, I the thing about me is that I really liked a challenge and it was a mm. challenge for me and that kind of inspired me to be better and just have, yes. have like this goal where I could could do it and like if they like to be honest like if they start paying me I know that I'm good like like it just started yep. to be like that because it was su it was such a long trial for me it was a few months yep until yep. they said to me, okay, you can start paying me now. And that's very yeah, important. Sure. And I, I'm very grateful for, for having that. And, you know, people don't understand you do have to work for free. And it's kind of just like being in a, any industry. You think about how you go on to internships or mm. you do trials. It, you could be a doctor and you still, you, you know, you're an apprentice or, I mean, not an apprentice, but <laughs> a yeah. um, work experience. It's the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even even being a, a barber or working in a hairdresser, you have to learn the ropes first to be able to then get paid appropriately. So I think that is a big thing. And, and we did touch on it as well last week. And it's almost like a, a mark of respect or a badge of honour once you're starting to get paid and then you go, wait a second, I'm getting paid for something I'm, I'm really passionate about or really love and then it really starts to click from then. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a rewarding yeah, for sure. And so you were shooting back then probably something like a Canon 550D, something of, of, of that ilk in the DSLR world, I, I even, even lower than that in the beginning. Jeez. <laughs> I was shooting something really bad. <laughs> yeah, wow. And, and um, it wasn't only until like a month or half a month later, six mm. months later, that I got the 5D, the 2, I think it was. Yep. And yep. it was still like not getting the light the way I wanted <laughs> With like a 24 yeah, to 70 right. and it was hard. And because live music, a lot of people will know or a lot of people won't, but you can't use a flash most times. Mm. A lot of acts in Australia or even worldwide don't allow a flash to be used while they're on stage. And um, yeah, wow. that's the, yeah. So it was very hard. So, yeah. So you, you're kind of at the mercy, I guess, of the, the lighting team and, and how the stage is outlaid a bit, aren't you, with... Um, music photography yeah. and and how do you work around that um, um, with your photography is there I, I think you spoke a bit about it last week where you sometimes meet with the lighting technicians to be able to achieve a certain look or know what their stage show is going to look like at certain stages throughout the evening it depends on the it depends on the gig really uh, mm. and it depends on how big the artist is so for example yeah. When I started to Oxidart and I was there every day, <laughs> I got to yep. know the team and I got to talk to the lighting tech and be like, please give me some white light. I need it. Mm -hmm. And uh -huh. um, that was really, really helpful and it worked. But like there's times when international artists have their own crew who yep. the lighting is managed and that's what yep. they want. Like some artists will be like, I don't want any light. I don't like it on me at all. So you're like really, yep. really can't do anything. But yeah, for sure. So Yeah. I mean, getting that and researching the shows really helps, yep. like YouTube, going onto YouTube, seeing what the show's like in other states or even overseas. Mm. You know, they've got all red lighting in the beginning, but then it turns white for you know, 
after. But then it's yep. very hard because in once I got into bigger venues, it was only three songs you could shoot as a photographer. So that's mm. all you got. So anything that change anything that was over the three songs you couldn't shoot. Yeah, right. Yeah. And are you in terms of I guess the outlay of, of getting your angles for each shot, um, is that something that is a bit trickier to do in venues um, like Oxford Art Factory where you, you don't have the ability to to move around the stage uh, and it's more so in the mosh pit itself. So it, 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 I guess it puts you in a position where you have to be quite creative um, getting different angles because pretty much everyone is probably at the same vantage points. Would that be correct? That's very true. Very, very true. Mm. In Sydney, mm. it's very competitive and it's like who wants to get in there first to get the shot and especially when something's going to happen like as in – smoking or jumping, anything like that. But yeah. being in a mosh pit and no photo pit, you just need to push your way through. I mean, the times yeah. that I had, <laughs> it's you get tactics. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, but like it's up I, on shoulder. What okay, you? I'll give you one. So yeah. you've got a full venue, Oxford Art Factory, say, for example, and yes. you have to do socials, which are photos to the camera with a flash. Hey, hey guys, would you like a photo? Yep. And you can photograph your way through to the front. There you go. So you, you, so you, yeah, it's easy. I mean, that's what I had been doing and I only found that out a lot later. Otherwise, you can wear Doc Martens and push you through to, through to the front. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's brutal, but it works. Yeah. A lot of people, the amount of times I've had fights with people saying, I've bought a ticket, you can't be here, is right. crazy. Like the... You know how many t- how long are you going to be there for i've paid a ticket to be here you haven't yes. and yes yeah it's it's brutal out there it's wild <laughs> yeah well it sounds like you've you've really got to be um kind of like street photography in in that regard you've got to be pretty confident in what you're doing pretty confident in and how you achieve the things that you are looking for and i guess being polite um you know and just being like oh don't worry about it and then standing back um, is not going to get you the results that you need at the end of the day. It really doesn't. Unless you do have a long lens and that's your style, then mm-hmm. it's fine. <laughs> but yep. if you want to be close and get your hands dirty, then you will definitely get the shot. Yeah, cool. Um, I think that's a really good point uh, for anyone that is doing a degree in photography or starting out in photography because it sounds like you've kind of j- dived in the... Uh, the deep end or the mosh pit, so to speak, um, to be able to achieve uh, your sort of style and and be able to be a bit more confident with your photography. Would that be right? Is that, would that say, teach you a little bit more than than learning it at uni as such? Because I found at uni, um, you kind of took your time um, and you could go through it slowly, but it was, it was more of, you know, learning it on paper, whereas, learning and experience in real life changes the game for you. Oh, definitely. I learnt more at Oxford Art Factory than I've learnt uh, like more in, at uni, always. Mm-hmm. I say, mm. will say that 100% always. Being in the environment definitely helps you in the long run rather than being in pa- on paper. Yep. yep. Awesome. And, and obviously the importance of networking and reaching out just in your early days obviously has paid dividends. Is that something that you would... Um, advise others to do the same? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, sorry, I was just reading the question. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Um, That's all good. Yes, I have. so I have been backstage quite a bit and being at uh, working for a venue really does help with being backstage and it does allow you to give have you have access. But, hey, like being... But when I started out, being backstage was this huge mm. thing. And, like, I think it's that barrier between a punter and a musician and having that access. But most of the time, mm. people that are backstage, they want their privacy. And it, you yep. sometimes don't get a lot unless you're working with the band mm. um, and you can relate with them, have a person, like, show your personality and talk to them and get the good shots. That's yep. the only time when you can get good backstage shots. Otherwise, you're 
shooting in some an area that's very clicky and you feel like an outsider. I yeah. mean, yeah, it's it depends on the show too. For sure. Yeah. I, I would I would certainly agree in that I've done a very small amount of music photography, um, but that is being a um, friend of band members. And I think that's quite a different experience when you see other bands um, that are opening or closing for the band you're with. It's kind of like they're, it's, it's very, very much there, there to chill out before they go um, out on stage or just come off stage and they're exhausted and they just want some, some break time. So you're right, there is certainly a barrier even if you get backstage access. It's not exactly what it's all glamorised out to be, I would say. It really isn't. The amount of times I've been backstage and they're just sitting there and I'm like, are you guys going to do something now? <laughs> because <laughs> exactly. like, the moment, I mean, if you're going to go backstage, the moment is to be either working for the band or I guess the venue. And when you do mm. get the shots, it's right maybe like 10 minutes before they go out because they're yeah. not doing anything. They're just sitting and talking or like doing something that they don't want to be photographed, let's be honest. <laughs> Definitely. If you want to be, uh, if you want to have an experience to some good vocal cord training or something like that, then maybe. But I think uh, that's about the highlight of it usually. Um, I mean, I shot but... for Eminem. Oh, sorry. No, you go on. <laughs> I shot for Eminem once, and he came from a limo all the way. Like it was a festival. I think yeah, it was yeah. at ANZ. A limo came yeah. right through to the stage and went from the limo out the limo and then straight up the stairs onto the show. Like, there was no backstage. Like, I was like, what the hell's going on? Like, that's pretty yeah, cool. Well. But, like, and he had a hoodie on and you couldn't see him go through and you're like, oh, I can't get anything. I, I really can't. So, uh, yeah. So it gets kind of like that and it's just like, oh, what's the mm, point in a way? Absolutely. Um, and, yeah, it goes, it goes without saying, I think certainly the bigger they are as well, the harder it is to get anything through backstage access. So that's a really good point. Um, now, going back to uni, um, you're obviously still doing the uni degree at the same time. Um, right. Is music photography then something you were thinking after uni would be the net result or were you learning something else during um, your photo degree that maybe said, you know, I want to try a bit of commercial photography? Um, I only started commercial photography after uni. So okay. I branched out after uni to do more of the commercial world. But yes. during uni, I was still, I had my hands full, that's for sure. Yeah, I was doing sure. music. And then we went, uh, the best thing about my degree was travel. We went to Bali yep. and New York to be in the essence of environment for photography. We did yeah, a bit wow. of abstraction and stuff like yep. that with how bus like busy it is in New York. Yes. And then after that, my last subject was to find a, into to do an internship with a, photo one, a photographer that you uh, as of your choice <laughs> so yeah. I had a, having a um a passion for photography I was like well if I'm going to do this I want to do it properly so I can put it on my yes. CV and yep. you know after I can just be like I, I did this not having it as a you know not nothing like a nothing thing so yeah, um luckily there was a email that came out not sure even sure how I got it but it was to be an intern for a film photographer named Mark Rogers on yep. the film Alien the Covenant and oh. it was a six-month job but it was an internship wow. and yes. we had to uh, he was looking for someone to do an intern trial yep. for one one yep. to two weeks and then to get yes. paid obviously and uh, I was like, oh, sweet, you know, like you'll never choose me. I, you know, I don't, I don't have any, like much skill except live music and low light. Yeah. So I got an interview. I reached out, got an interview. There was about 30 to 40 people get trying to get this job, probably more, but that's yes. what I was told. Yeah. And <laughs> I, <laughs> I got the, I got the internship. I, I said to him, I, I have a week at uni where I can do this for free for you and I could offer that. And yep. I'm, I'm learning. He was looking for someone that was learning that would get too bored in the job and it was yes. to assist. Yes. So we, I got, I got the job. <laughs> I did it. I went back to uni, told them that I had got this job and they were stoked. 
But yeah. the, the thing is that the internship for uni to do that subject, to complete it, was one week and then you do the assignments on it. Though after the one week for the, for the job that I was getting hired for yes. was longer and <laughs> I reached out to uni and I said, could I please do this job? This is huge. Could yeah. I stay on it and not have so much absence <laughs> yeah uh, certainly yeah so I don't fail and they yeah. said no and then I failed on attendance and I had to pitch I, well I had to choose which one I wanted and I obviously wanted the job because it's more experience I wanted to stay in the industry mm. and I picked the job and I had to defer that subject and so I failed on attendance oh wow there you go so then later yeah. on <laughs> So yeah. you're going to a uni degree to obviously learn about photography and, and continue a career in photography, but the, as soon as a career opportunity comes about while you're studying, that doesn't meet the criteria. It's pretty brutal, to be honest. Mm. Mm. Um, I mean, the, so the course that I did doesn't even exist anymore, so that really shows yeah. a lot, and I can kind of say that because it doesn't exist. <laughs> mm. Absolutely. So I was gutted and had to... I've, I learned more being on this, like being on that job than I did at uni anyway. So I was pretty happy with it. I did yeah. finish my degree after I stayed on alien and worked with Mark Rogers for five years or four to five years doing films as a assistant and shooter. And I, it was crazy because he was my mentor. He ended up being my mentor and it was something that I'm really, I'm still really close with him now and I don't regret it at all. Yeah. Wow. Um, and, and tell us a bit about that side of photography coming from the music scene, coming from being at uni and then sort of being thrust into an opportunity um, that is quite a serious um, position um, and then quite a drastic change from what you have known. How, how did you find that early on and, and how did you stay uh, confident with your decision? So the reason why I did get hired from that job was because he was looking at someone that understood low light because mm -hmm. Alien was very low lit, like it's scary, yes. it's thriller, it's a lot of LED lighting and I understood that and that what, that's what Oxidart taught me. So that was something mm. that really helped me get something else while I was shooting uh, I didn't really know anything about the film industry when I started, didn't really know, I didn't know terms such as like a mm. shot bag, they call it a mm. shoddy, I was like what the hell's a shoddy or something yeah. like that, terms like that and I'm like googling going what the hell, yeah. but I I was still doing Oxford Art at the time, so <laughs> I was working Jeez. from and I was doing uni part-time because I had two other subjects to keep going so I wouldn't fail completely. Yeah. So I did have my hands full. There were 14-hour days. The first day was at yes. is was in New Zealand. So we yeah, wow. travelled out to New Zealand at Milford Sound, which was a very, very hard location. It's yes. pretty much just mountains and like a national park. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even have hiking shoes. I had to go out and do that. And, like, that's the things that you don't really think about. <laughs> yeah, and wow. it was cold. It was hard. It was hard like getting stuff, not knowing how a film set works was very hard mm. too. Talking to mm. people that I shouldn't be talking to, where's my boss kind of thing, got yelled yeah. at thousands of times. It was it was a challenge and I really enjoy yeah. a challenge. <laughs> yeah, So and it, Yeah, yeah. And it said, um, I sort of read into some interviews you have been doing and, and you were saying how, you know, even in moments where you think you can't do something, you're actually quite, quite stronger than you actually thought you originally are. And I think being pushed um, to the deep end a little bit really forges your character and um, ends up doing things that you, you would have said, you know, six months prior that there's no chance you were going to do it. So hearing uh, yeah. you talk about carrying like sea stands around and big heavy equipment, and I'm sure it's not something you envisioned at the start, um, but the, the no. fact <laughs> is it, it, it's, it's allowed you then to do your own photography later on. And I think there's that grinding period where you do have to be an assistant and, and do have to take orders to be able to, to get in that position. Would that be some, something definitely. about right? Yes. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, cool. So, and you, 
Um, when we spoke last week, you were saying you did have some quite good experiences with other staff that were working on the shoot and you're still friends. Obviously, again, that's networking at play a little bit and, and all going through the challenge together. It's, I think in the film industry, I didn't even know this while I was on Alien because it was my mm. first ever film set, is that Alien was just so big, like so many people that it all the crew that it was on were on that have been on other films too. So they're mm. doing the same thing. So yes. you end up being friends with everyone and knowing everyone. So then you build a relationship. So it becomes easier later, which is really important. Yeah. And that's with any industry and also in the music world as well. I, I still bump into photographers and punters, musicians that are like, I know you, you shot at Oxford Art Factory back in, you know, 2014, you shot this first photo of me and that only happened on the weekend. And I was like, wow. And I look at the photo and I'm like, I've come a long way. (laughs) But it is connection and and it really helps with personality as well. And when I started at Oxford Art, I tried to talk to as many people as I could. And that's some advice that I would give out is to be very friendly because they usually do stay in the same industry even if they're mm. a different title. So someone might reach out to you and say, I really enjoyed the photos you did 10 years ago. Can you um, can you do this now, which is like commercial? And that's how that comes about. Yeah, awesome. That's re- some really good advice. Um, was Mark the photographer that said to you, um, you can have everything you want, just not at the same time? He did, yes. And good it's very one, true so. and I live like that. Yeah, and that was kind of the uni degree versus, you know, the, the cool experience you had with Mark as so, well. Well, what was hap- yeah, that's right. What was happening was I was getting very tired. <laughs> I was young, mm. but I was tired. I, yep. I was c- coming to work after doing an Oxford Art gig and doing uni and com- work going to Fox Studios at like early seven or six or whatever they're starting at the days are yes. different, to do a 14 yes. to 10, 10 to 14 hour day to edit because I was doing the editing yep. and I was getting a bit slow. Like, I mean, in the beginning I was fine, but I was like, it's, it's natural, right? So yeah, I was doing that. And then he said to me after, I think I finished my degree, after I finished my degree, because I went back to uni and finished, <laughs> luckily. Yeah. <laughs> I... He was like, so what do you want to do? And then that's when he said that to me because I was trying to do music, I was trying to do film, I was trying mm. to do my own pro- like personal projects as well. So it was like a lot and he said that to me and it's very true. It is, yeah. It's very true. 100%. No, that's very good. And I guess like leading to juggling everything and I've seen it across the creative industries quite a lot is that eventually if you're not, falling into one particular category, you will end up burning yourself out pretty easily. And that, you know, can it can do a whole career change at that point. You can go from loving to photography to hating photography quite easily. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> mm. um, not for me, but I like to do no. everything. <laughs> no, that's because, that's, that's because I think you've done it, handled it pretty well. Um, and I like, I like the fact that you've ch- handled the challenges front on as well, rather than, like being a you know young young person, it's very easy to say you know I'll do that tomorrow or I'll get and do that next week. But instead of that, you've tackled it head on and your fruits of the labour have really come to fruition, which is cool. Well, being at gigs every night was something that I really thrived on. So it was mm. kind of like being out every night. I wasn't going out with my friends, but I was starting to become a person personality and starting to really know myself just being alone. And being yeah. at gigs with music, meeting people, I just really enjoy it. And I still do. And that's what I really love about my job. For sure. And now when you go to a gig, um, just to view it, are you looking at angles? Are you concentrating on the lighting or are you able to actually focus on the gig itself and enjoy it? Yeah, I think I've come quite far now to just go, I know when something's going to happen. I, I look it. into the musician's eyes and I'm like, are you going to do something? I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, um, going into it, I do have a question here from Stephen. Um, Stephen, thanks for tuning in. Um, he's part of Canon Collective. He's a very um, 
unique individual and very uh, important in the scene at the moment. What do you know now that you wish you knew at the start of your career, Maria? I honestly only thought about this a few weeks ago and it was that mm. clients book you for you, not for someone else. So the idea of my style being quite grungy and uh, like underground is what mm. they're booking me for. They're not booking me for yeah. something clean. And I mean, for me as a photographer and going through my career, I was a huge overthinker. And yep. I used to kind of compete with other photographers going, oh, mm. you know, back in the day it was Instagram was very, very big and they got more likes than me, why, that kind mm. of thing. And it mm. doesn't matter. It really doesn't. And when the, a client reaches out for you, they reach out for you and they don't reach yep. out to be another photographer style. And that's something that yeah. I wish I knew a lot longer. Like I've only just figured that out really. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I wish I knew wow. that. Cool. Thank you very much, Stephen, for the question. Um, and I, I also think it's important to not to, I guess, mimic someone else's style. Like I, I know on Instagram, it's pretty easy to fall into the trap of seeing a certain style of photography and then just instantly changing from your style to their style. And that's, you know, something that you can fall a trap into as well, I think, quite easily. Definitely. Um, I mean, for live music, it was very hard as... I was trying to get it very sharp and these photographers mm. were coming, like other photographers that weren't shooting at Oxford Art were getting it really, really sharp. And then yeah. only years later, I'd noticed that it was the light. The light was clear, like it was, sorry, white with blue, mm. not red with white. Like, and, and it was, wasn't was clear. And I'm like, but they're sharp. Why isn't it that clear? Yeah. And it's just like, it's the lighting. It's how much the vent, like how big the venue is with the expensive lighting. And then it's a lot sharper. There's just like simple things like that, you know. You just dwell you over them. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Um, now, Maria, tell us a bit about Four Minutes to Midnight and how, the, the firstly, the name came about and then how did that evolve and how did that come about as well? So Four Minutes to Midnight, I started when I started Oxford Art Factory the same yep. night. Yep. <laughs> I did think okay. about it, obviously, but... Um, Four Minutes to Midnight is, was when I was born, so that really helps my personality to come through through oh. my alias. I started as awesome. a company, oh, not as a company, as a sole trader as Four Minutes yes. to Midnight, Maria, yes. because in the industry during the time, this is nine to ten years ago, females mm. photographers weren't really seen in the grunge underground to shoot, and it was mm. it ended up being a few in the few years that I was shooting, it was very hard to get work being a female and it's completely changed now. I mean, yesterday mm. I, there were so many people, cook, um, sorry, asking me to do International Women's Day and I'm like, I'm booked out because I'm a female and that's completely changed and I love that. Oh, but sure. back then it wasn't like that. It was so hard to be one of the boys and to be an alias really helped my career to thrive really because it was thinking that it was coming from an agent, but it wasn't if that makes sense, mm, kind of sneaky, yeah, but definitely. it really helps. I think that's uh, yeah. very forward thinking and outside the box idea. And I think that that's a really cool thing that you've done. And, and obviously quite special with the naming and not only that, thinking that at the time and then following that through the whole time and you were still happy with the name and everything was working really well yeah. is pretty special as well. So that's cool. Um, now, Maria, tell us a bit about Canon as a brand. So, obviously, you've done um, you've done some shoots with Canon for, before in the past, namely the um, video of the testing of the EOS R. Do you want to tell us a bit about how that experience came about? I got I was reached out from Monster Children, yep. and they asked me to come to Japan to shoot uh, anything I wanted. Actually, I could choose which was oh, awesome. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I was had a real passion for skate at the time. So I ended mm -hmm. up saying skate and street light, like street photography at night because it was low light and I really like low light. I yes. originally wanted to do sumo wrestling, but it wasn't the time. So, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> that would have that been really been cool. cool too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. yeah, it was probably one of the best trips I've been on for work. It was so much fun. Um, testing something that I had a passion for. I've always shot with Canon and I always will. Um, and that was the first mirrorless. So it was great to test it and see how far it got me. And things just 
kind of lined up with a lot of the shots. It just kind of happened, which was awesome. Yeah. And it felt sure. like I was in a mosh pit because it was just kind of happening. Yeah, for sure. And we're going to um, show you some images from that trip as well a little bit later, which is really cool. Um, how do you think, obviously we were talking a bit about gear um, before, but um, using mirrorless for the first time compared to also how you're utilising mirrorless now, was it quite a big change or something that you were like, wow, I wish I had this eight years ago? I honestly, uh, when I was in Japan, it was very overwhelming because Japan mm. is such a... Um, populated place to find yes. something to do something and yeah. I really enjoyed I did really enjoy that but it was a huge change not knowing how to use a camera it kind of felt like that first day at Oxford Art I just uh -huh. um, but I knew a lot like a lot more knowledge but I was even pressing the buttons for the 5D going oh no wait it's not there but it was awesome it was, there, yeah. it was a lot faster and I could capture a lot of things a lot sharper faster which was amazing yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Tell us a bit about the gear that you have now. I know you um, mentioned it earlier. You might have some show and tell or just something quickly that you can show us <laughs> what you're shooting on currently. So I only this year I did it. I went mirrorless. I have the, the R5. Nice. So I, um, I do have the adapter with the old lenses just because yep. so we've got the, I I'm still rocking the AF you know, lenses. It takes a while to you know, get your kit going still, mm, um, but mm. it still works the same. You don't lose any stops because it's mirrorless. Um, I do shoot a lot with the 1.250 and the, the EF and the one and the 85 as well, um, just because it is low light and I do a little yes. like a lot a lot of low light, so yeah. it really helps. But the differences between the 5D and the mirrorless are huge. I didn't think that they were. But going from, I remember the first day I got it from CPS to rent, I rented it out to test it because I was considering it this year. That yes. was a very big nope. choice because they are, mm. they're not cheap. <laughs> and yes. um, I was in love. <laughs> I loved it so much. <laughs> I got so much that I would never get for live music because the first night I used it was for a live music gig. And yes. even with the flash, it's so fast. You can eye track and I have set it up so you can just press a button and eye track straight away and it's perfect. You get so much more than you do in the, with the 5G. I I'm, I'm, can't go back, but I do use both sometimes just for a backup. Awesome. Well, I've even, I've got some images up here and I think we we're talking a little bit earlier. This is the, the first image you'd taken or one of the first images you'd taken with the R5. Um, yeah. and, and that must have been a pretty cool experience to get some pretty epic stuff straight away. I mean, just even how her hair, you can see how sharp her hair is when it's like, it's in movement, obviously, but, and it is with mm. a flash, but still it, it's something that you wouldn't get usually. And I was stoked. Yep. I was really happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, now, where was this shot taken, Maria? It was taken in the old age cinema in Surrey Hills. They yep. do, um, it was a private show for this artist. And she came from New York, I think, and just did a small show for VIP. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah. See, times like that, because I was working with the artist, I could do behind the scenes stuff and they were mm. really happy with it. I mean, sorry, backstage. Yeah, sure. and, and getting that close was okay. I mean, I try to do that all the time, but getting in the way and that kind of thing can get annoying for some artists, but that was fine. Yeah, cool. Um, we'll, we'll go quickly first and we might start it out where, with your um, Japan photo. So we've got some pretty epic stuff on the skateboarding. So we were talking a little bit earlier about the skateboarding um, work you've done. This was a shot um, from, from the video. I think there was some good yeah. content of this in the video if anyone wants to check it out a bit later too. Yeah, so this actually happened. This wasn't staged at all. So these mm. were just... Um, it was midnight and for some reason there was just so much going on and yeah. I was like loving it because I was like, where do I even look? <laughs> and yeah. so the skater in that shot, was he was with us and he was showing us around and that kind of thing and he was very good and he could skate. So I yep. said to him, hey, go, go and skate through those bikers. It would be like, it would be awesome. And he did and... <laughs> I was literally in the middle of the street and these 
bikers did not know who I was or like how dangerous that could be. Mm. And they were stopped at the lights, but they moved. So then when I was still in the middle of the street while I was shooting it, if that makes yeah, sense, right. while yeah, they were coming yeah, definitely. through. Definitely. And yeah, no, I loved it. I, I still really like that image as well. <laughs> For sure. I, I think it shows um, a bit of your music photography and to just be able to get in close and getting the shot and not being too scared about, you know, getting getting yeah, involved yeah. in the experience overall, which is pretty cool. Definitely about the confidence, that's for sure. If you don't have yeah. it, then, because, yeah, you don't get as much. It's hard to get the moments, definitely. I mean, you do have to risk it a little, and if you don't want to, then it's hard to get it, I guess, unless it's staged, mm. but it doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Um, tell us about this image, uh, Maria. So this was in Japan too with the same crew. Uh, this yep. was a tattoo artist and really great guy, actually. He did only spoke a little bit of uh, English, sorry. Mm -hmm. And we just did a portrait. His studio was amazing. There was stuff everywhere. Um, there was just so much to see. And it was very creative and took a portrait of him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very cool. And did you, you obviously had a had a ball when um, you were shooting shooting the images as well? Um, you had a great time in Japan. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I that's, already that's had good. been to Japan a few times, and yeah. I already really loved it. So when I went back, I was like, I've got to do it for work. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. oh, good. Um, now I'll go back to the first image, um, Maria. Yeah. This one here. So that's at Oxford Art Factory. Cool. Um, it was a, an earlier, earlier image that I took. And you can see even like how there's not much lighting going on there. Mm. And that I did way. have to invest in a, very, a 16 to 35 mil just to get the shots like this because yeah. I'm getting pushed up. Uh, yeah, I, I'm getting pushed up to the, towards the stage so I can't yeah. really go back a bit. So yep. get the, 35, the wide is very helpful for that. Mm. Yeah. yeah, cool. I'll go back out here. I'm just going to flick, start flicking through some. Is this uh, Oxford um, as well? Um, no, this is the Lansdowne. Cool. Um, similar. Also, the lighting isn't that great, <laughs> obviously. Mm. Um, getting closer to the artist is something that is really my style. I like mm. to really get up close. And when they see you, they kind of think about it, but if you're – the idea is to actually look at them and not just keep shooting and yeah, thinking, sure. like, be like, oh, hey, like, I really want to take a photo of you closer. And, like, yeah. sometimes they'll do it. Sometimes they won't. But you're not asking. You're just, like, enjoying. And I think that's yeah, what they really so. like to see. And they're like, oh, she's really enjoying it as, as, her, as her job. I'll go up close and I'll try to take it. But that's also with the 16. And if I didn't have that on, I wouldn't have got a shot like this. Cool. That's a, that's a really good point on interaction with band members as well because sometimes, obviously, if you've got freedom to move around the stage, you can be a bit still a bit unsure of yourself and, and interaction with bands. And I think what's, uh, what's big, especially in, in most involvements, whether it be sports or something else, people really feed off your energy. So if you're Thank projecting you. a really cool energy, they want to get involved. So yeah, that's proof that's right. there that you're going to get some really cool shots. So that's awesome. Yeah. So this is at the Oxford Art, oh, sorry, the Vic, which is yep. um, obvious. <laughs> yes. So the Vic do very cool bands at the moment. Um, Music and Booze sponsor them, so they get booked through that. And yeah, cool. they do lots of, this was a, in a mosh pit as well, and the stage is very <laughs> small for this. <laughs> and Flash is allowed, so because <laughs> yeah, right. there's absolutely no lighting there. Um, yes. Worse than Oxford Art, actually. <laughs> Oh, wow. So flash and flash actually looks quite good there, just because it is so pitch yep. black. But getting the image yep. and getting it in focus is hard. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I guess in some ways, things like the mirrorless cameras these days can help a little bit with the, the face and eye tracking yeah, to definitely. be able to achieve some of those shots. So that's really cool. Yeah. So this is Tyler, the creator, and that was at mm. um, Beyond the Valley yep. in Victoria. I think. Yep. Uh, this was New Year's Eve, actually, and they didn't want photos oh, wow. for this, and so there was no. There would have been a photo kit, 
there was they did not allow any photographers so you had to shoot from the audience <laughs> So this is a very big mosh pit um, and at the time my camera wasn't working. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so like, <laughs> Makes it I hard. mean, yeah, it does. So the the screen wouldn't show the live view mm -hmm. and shooting in a mosh pit of thousands of people trying to get to the front, no one but like moves at all for that. Yeah, you can't no, flush no your way. way through that kind of mush fit. No, um, no way. And getting it was very hard to get. Mm. And obviously on a long lens, um, I'm even surprised I even got anything, to be honest. Yeah. Right. And obviously he didn't want any light on him, that kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. That was a hard shoot. Oh, I bet. <laughs> so sounds like it. And then you would have been going back to the, the old days a little bit with without the lack of uh, live view being able to help you? Well, even like if you don't have live view and you're in a mosh pit, you can't put your camera to your face. You have to no. put it on top because it's too yep. – and these stages are huge. So getting, getting anything, around. you can't – yeah, you're getting knocked around a lot. <laughs> mm. And it's like you take it and you finish and you're like, did I even get anything? I don't think I did. Was it even worth going in there? Like I've got one shoe on and – you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> so Yeah, definitely. Or get, you get hit in the face. I mean, I remember I did some of the first festivals I did. I got hit from a beer can thrown at the artist because I think it was like June rats or something. <laughs> and because they do, Say and no it more. hit me in the head and I actually got a concussion in the, and I had to stop shooting because I fainted oh, while yeah. shooting. Like I, there was, that, that was the surroundings I had to be in and right. I did not feel well at all. And I was like, is this no. worth it? Like there's so many yeah. times in my career where I'm like, I can't, <laughs> but then I do. And then after that, I'm getting hit and not fainting and going, I kept shooting for the rest of the night. And then the next day I'm like, that was not worth it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's pretty impressive. Um, and I, and I guess um, in some ways as well, while we go through the next photos, you've, you've probably given up some pretty major events, some parties, birthday parties, New Year's Eve, you know, things like that, you've obviously stayed very committed to your craft. I have, but now that I'm in the industry, I can take it off and I can mm. be, I can get, I can quote as much as I want for those big events because yep. I have been in the industry for a while and I know that if you want me, you're going to have to pay that much and people do and that's why doing it for that long kind of is rewarding now because I can do that. Yep. Doing, doing the hard stuff early and, yeah. and fruits of labour coming later. That's really good advice. Yeah. yeah, cool. Tell us a bit uh, about these images. Uh, I know we wanted to talk about some more. So we've got, we've got Iggy Pop here as well. It's, this must be a bit of a pinch yourself moment as well. At the Opera House, yeah. There wasn't that many um, photographers as well, so it was kind. Of, it was very rewarding. I think there was only like three wow. photographers, including myself. Um, yeah. And, yeah, it was very – I did really enjoy it because I really like that kind of music as well. Mm, mm, absolutely. I think this one was Harry this, Styles. Yeah. This was Harry and I was the only shooter. And I had to shoot from the sound desk, which is some artists only would request that just because they don't yep. want anything. And it's only three songs also from the sound desk. And I was shooting and I turned around and um, Stevie Nicks was behind me. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. I don't get starstruck, but I really like her. And yeah, wow. I just turned around and I was like, hello. And she's like, hi. And I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> so you do get moments <laughs> like that. And it's like, it's really nice. Because he met, she mentors him, and so she was travelling uh, with him. Oh wow! Yeah, that's, that's so cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it must be interesting nowadays going through you know mosh pits eight nine years ago, and everyone's just getting stuck into the music, and now you've you've got basically competing with with other photographers all in the all in the crowd because everyone's got a phone trying to take a photo. That's right. Even with other photographers, when I was at Oxford Art shooting almost every day, mm. there was no other shooters because there would have been like local bands and I wasn't used to being competing really, yeah. I guess you could say, yep. with other photographers getting into my spots because yep. they're my spots because I was there every day. <laughs> you yeah, know, exactly. it's that kind of thing. It's like, what are you doing here? 
but then you end up being friends and all that kind of thing I could naturally so and yeah and I think that's true to your point about staying genuine and being genuine um you know not spreading bad energy when it comes to the photography side of things because these are the people that you know could be working alongside you in in two three years time that's right yeah this is a cool shot so that was at the opera house as well uh we did a so this would be a behind the scenes shot actually of a interview and a live session they were doing for youtube yeah and they were just hanging out waiting to go on on stage like on the microphone i guess yeah so you're working alongside yeah or natural lighting um yeah beautiful yeah they were very lovely too Killing Heidi at Taronga Zoo. That was fun. Oh, that was the, the R5. And this is a bit more of your um, doing a bit more creative or commercial work? Yeah. So during lockdown, I was kind of lost, mm. <laughs> like you do. And I renovated an old garage and um, put up some coloured paper to get some musicians in that I wanted to get photographed to get content. So I started to do that for a little while and that was that shot before for that. Mm. And then during, so that I was on that? obviously yep. yeah, on there. So that was in a, in a garage actually. And cool. this shot here, I was also very bored. So I started a personal project mm-hmm. and went to musicians' houses or environments that they're always in, that they're locked down in to photograph them, um, their portraits, because they didn't have a stay really. There, there was no live music at all at the time, obviously. Yeah. That and I got some amazing of... photos too. Yeah. yeah, for sure, and access as well. And that must be quite um, an eerie feeling, I guess. There's a bit of uncertainness out in the world, especially during this time. Um, and, you know, freelance, being a freelance um, creative person, um, to have that livelihood taken away, that must have been a, a pretty surreal sort of feeling. It Certainly was. Going it, through those yeah, years. In the beginning, it was like, oh, yeah, okay. But then I started to be like, I've got to be creative. I don't feel like mm. I'm I feel hopeless. I feel like I haven't committed anything to the world, you know. And like, because I had such a big passion for photography, I did feel very lost and thinking like he's in a bit photography, my my go-to or anything like that should I keep the Mm. career it was hard and I'm sure it was on a lot of creatives at the time so I had to do something (laughs) and that's when Oxford Arts work really came in because all the people that I did photograph were people that I built a relationship with during Oxford Mm. Art and these are all artists that I could reach out to and they agreed to it because I had a relationship while I was doing that Oxford Art without me those many that many years (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it goes to the point, um, you know, networking and reaching out and not just being a, a face in the crowd taking photos has, has proven that you can do do other things um, with, with those contacts and networks you do have as well, which is cool. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. So that was some, some great images and obviously you've gone through different styles. How would you sort of explain your style in photography? Um, at this point, Maria? I, my style varies, but it still is the same. Mm. I really enjoy capturing low light, obviously, and grungy vibes, though yeah. uh, when I do shoot, overall is candid. I do not like to pose people. I Even mm. in the commercial world or even doing advertising, I like to capture an emotion and a that is that would be my style of, depending, obviously, the edit is very different to which one, which kind of mm. area that the photo- photo- photograph is taken, but it is yeah. always trying to capture something that is very natural. I don't like to be pose people. I like to see them laughing and crying. I guess crying, you could say. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, just sharing your work, how do people uh, get in contact with you? How do people look at your work, Maria? What's the, the best ways to, to get in touch? Uh, through email I guess or yep. Instagram anything social uh, through my website even yeah I think, anything like that I think yeah. D's got your 
Instagram handle, Four Minutes to Midnight as well. Certainly check yeah. out some of Maria's work. Now, Maria, just touching um, and just finally, um, you've obviously been given some great advice throughout the industry throughout your years. Um, what's a piece of advice you'd give back to, to anyone watching tonight that wants to be a photographer? Be confident in who you are, I guess. I, yeah. I mean, people also like being out there in the wild, even doing events or anything, you're there to do the job and respect that for yourself. <laughs> Don't worry about what other people think. The amount of times I've even been rejected for photos is not funny. Like mm. it is a lot and I wouldn't worry about what people think. Get up there, you know, get into it. Just same as if you're, even if you're doing street photography or anything like that, um, just be confident and just get in there. Yeah. Awesome. Maria, um, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to have you. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing your work throughout the next few years. And, and yeah, it's just been a great experience to, to listen to everything you shared tonight. So we really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Awesome. Now, we um, just following up, we do have another on the couch coming up on the 27th. The 27th of March, we've got Brooke Pike. Um, and we're going to learn a bit about her photography in the wildlife um, industry. She's got some great images um, as well, so we'll be able to share that. Thanks to everyone tuning in tonight. Um, don't be afraid to, to like and subscribe the page and just keep up the latest um, with us at Camera Pro AU on Instagram. And, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in tonight, everyone. I hope everyone learned something. Um, and if you have any further questions, don't, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you very much.